deze clip gaat erover dat je met dit flesje een enorme stap kan maken in je gezondheid. Het gaat er niet over hoe je met ditzelfde flesje dit witte shirt helemaal mooi blauw kan krijgen. Ook gaat het er niet over dat je met dit flesje je aquarium kan ontsmetten. En het is geen geschiedenisles over hoe dit het eerste chemische medicijn was, kunstmatige medicijn. Het staat nog steeds op de lijst van de essentiële geneesmiddelen van de Wereldgezondheidsorganisatie. Daar gaat het ook niet over. En deze clip gaat als laatste niet over het feit dat je dit kan vinden in elk ziekenhuis om bij mensen weer zuurstof in hun bloed te krijgen. But I guess I'll start off with saying I wrote the book, The Ultimate Guide to Methylene Blue. Published it last year. So it was discovered by Nobel laureate Robert Ehrlich. He published a study in like the 1890s. Uh, showing that it completely cured two malaria patients. So what methylene blue uh, represents was the very first pharmaceutical drug ever developed. It's completely synthetic, yet it works in ways that are physiologically rational, that makes sense. Uh, and that is that they affect the metabolism in a positive way. It's a mystery like why it works, but we know how it works we know exactly how it works this is very well identified so uh essentially i'm not sure if you talk about this much on your show but the idea that you know mitochondria and their well functioning is the key to health a high level of energy production in the body is the key to health and uh if you look at like a puppy or a child they're just like bursting with energy running around the room that is the epitome of health that's what we're looking for And if you feel that way, that's a good sign. And methylene blue tends to be a really good way to restore mitochondrial function when it's impaired. Methylene blue can function as the missing enzyme. So this is why it's so incredible, because it helps your body restore metabolic function, improve uh, ATP and CO2 production. And then it's like this vicious circle, uh, for a lack of a better term, because it's a really good thing. Um, of improvement in your metabolic function that tends to last too. It's like we can lose our health very quickly. The metabolic function can kind of go down very quickly and it produces things that keep it down further. And then, but if you fix it, it can very quickly improve and kind of be self-sustaining. So it's very exciting. We can heal quickly and methylene blue seems to be one of the best possible ways to do that. So if I understand this correctly, One of the core tenets of mitochondrial or metabolic medicine is that all the diseases originate when the body lacks sufficient power, and that occurs because of problems with the mitochondria. And what's so special about methylene blue is that no matter where along that process, the energy generation process, there's an issue, it's able to insert itself and restore proper functionality. Yeah, very well said. As life goes on, as the metabolism slows, in direct proportion to that the NAD to the NADH ratio seems to decrease. And methylene blue being something that increases mitochondrial biogenesis, like multiplies the number of mitochondria in your cells, uh, which like exercise does too, um, it also increases the NAD to the NADH ratio as well. So very, very effective in many different ways. And it's fun to outline all the ways that it can help. Yeah, one interesting thing that I think it was Robert Ehrlich determined is that methylene blue tends to accumulate in the brain, uh, which is an amazing thing uh, because our brains use a lot of energy. And so if the metabolism's off, there are going to be some significant issues. They need a lot of energy to function properly, basically. So the fact that methylene blue is something that promotes a high level of energy production goes right to where it's needed most, that's a really good thing. And that's why it's been shown in recent years like the research is really taking off for methylene blue as like a nootropic uh, for reducing depression but also for things like dementia so parkinson's and alzheimer's i go over those in the book and even autism as well it's been studied for which has been shown increasingly to be a metabolic disease as well which is methylene blue's specialty so it's for its ability to switch back on Uh, oxidative energy production, and also to function as an antioxidant uh, it is very, definitely very protective and restorative for the brain. So your experience using methylene blue with phototherapy, whether that's natural sunlight or that's red light, 
What do you think? Like, do you know how it works and why it's more effective than doing either by themselves? Yeah, so it's because of the fact that red light and near infrared light tend to uh, be absorbed by the cytochrome C oxidase enzyme. So both red light and methylene blue are the two, the only two known um, substances or therapeutic interventions that I know of that can actually photo dissociate and in the case of methylene blue, dissociate the nitric oxide from that specific enzyme, and then it upregulates its activity. So by taking both together, you're getting something taken that's flowing through your bloodstream that can do that, and it's affecting all the cells along the ways from your esophagus to your stomach, small intestine, and everything in the blood and your veins. Uh, and then, of course, the red light and the near infrared light, they can penetrate many inches deep into the body. So that's amazing. You know, for 100% that that's pure. There's no excipients, unlike taking some oral supplements, which is one of the huge advantages. Yeah. It's a non-invasive procedure. So I think just to combine both of them, that you're, they're working in very similar ways, and it just seems to really synergize. And the research is, is showing that these days. And I also recommend shining a red light, putting it directly against your forehead, getting the brain cells, especially the hippocampal area, or just laying out in the sun more. Most people don't do that enough. Yeah. So one of my audience asked if you can just use a full body panel and just put it closer, like focus it on your head, or you need a special targeted one to concentrate and apply it directly to your forehead like that. I've seen ones that you can like wrap around your head or your waist for weight loss, which is really convenient. But when I've looked at them, it took a long time to find out the wattage on these things. It's like they don't advertise it, and it's because it's such a low wattage. Yeah. So a full body panel can be like a thousand watts, yeah. 600 watts to a thousand. Um, and these small ones sometimes are like eight, they can be as low as eight milliwatts, like the helmet devices oh. as well, which is like eight one thousandths of a single watt. Yeah. So compare that to even like a 20 watt device and you're getting like so much more. It's unbelievable. Oh, good. So. So, yeah, the ones that wrap around here are pretty good. But, yeah, any kind of panel you have, especially if it's higher wattage, yeah. is going to do very well. The most important thing is you put it directly against mm. the body part you want to treat because that wastes less photons and it also penetrates more deeply. Gotcha. A number of studies have shown that as low as like a 10 milligram dose might be the ideal for all conditions, regardless of body size or anything like that which is a very small dose. We're talking 20 drops of a 1% methylene blue solution in water. And uh, it turns out that that dose, just from a practical standpoint, I've been working with 100 people or hundreds of people over the past year who have been experimenting on themselves um, using methylene blue and like reporting the results. Um, a 10 milligram dose seems to be best too, because when you put that in, I recommend orange juice, and mix it up and drink it, it doesn't dye your teeth or mouth very much mm -hmm. relative to a much higher dose, which definitely would become more of an issue. So it's like, not only is it a small dose, which is safer, it's cheaper, but it's also less of a problem as far as dyeing your mouth if you got to go into, out into public after. So for a number of conditions, yeah, they're thinking that 10 milligrams might be the ideal. So I always recommend that that's what people start off with, but 10 milligrams might be, you know, the ideal amount. So no need to take like 200 milligrams or 280 like that lady's son. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you the end of that story too, by the way. Um, so he ended up drinking that. She wrote in, she said, you know, is he going to be okay? And I just told her what I told you that that is just a little bit more than the upper limit of what's safe. So it's like, oh, he might get some negative symptoms. But if I had to guess, I would say he's probably going to be a lot better off. His body will metabolize that quickly and get rid of it. So yeah. if you don't notice any negative effects within the next 12 hours or so, uh, he's going to be more than fine. And she wrote back and she said, you were, you were right. He's definitely much, much better off now. <laughs> like she noticed a lot of his symptoms went away. Wow. So that's a great way to start with it, actually. If you can handle downing that much, <laughs> just a massive dose, you're just a huge boost to help your body take care of the thing that's been struggling to for so many years. Yeah. Uh, but they found basically in that study that 10, like one group got 300 milligrams and one got 10. And they found that the one got 300 had no additional benefits over the, the cohort that just got 10. 
So that's really impressive. It makes it less expensive and just way more practical. So it, we couldn't have hoped for anything better yeah. as far as people who are looking to heal and not spend a million dollars and dye their whole body blue. This is one of those ingredients that I feel like should go in every household's first aid kit, because as you just mentioned, it's been used in hospitals via IV effectively for treating poisonings along with uh, NAC, activated charcoal and sodium bicarb and a bunch of other things to like help protect the body from whatever it is and to offset like the metabolic dysregulation that can cause. It's been used in medicine for so long and it also has like accepted uses outside of self experimentation add some credibility to it. Yeah, absolutely. And there was one study I remember reading, it was talking about the UN recommended that hospitals from many different countries stockpile methylene blue because of how important it is. In fact, the UN put it on their list of the top 50 list of essential medicines. So very important medicine. And it's uh, useful to stockpile. Actually, oh, speaking of that, some people might be wondering like, oh, I want to buy a whole bunch then. But what about the expiry? Is this ever going to go bad? And I spoke to an unnamed lead chemist. So he doesn't take responsibility for it. But he said, between me and you, he said, like, methylene blue is very stable. As long as it stays out of the light, it will last pretty much indefinitely, despite the, I think, five-year expiry date on the bottle. They have to kind of do that. But, yeah, as far as it, it will pretty much last forever is what he's saying, which is amazing. <laughs> Oké, okay, nu gaan we met Methylene Blue een oplossing maken. Dat betekent dat 1 gram in dit flesje gaat. Daar doen we 100 milliliter water bij. En dan verdeel ik het daarna over deze flesjes die ik in het verleden heb bewaard. Uh, dit is ontzettend uh, vlekgevoelig. Dus je doet het op een blauwe tafel met een blauwe jas en een blauwe sjaal. Maar zorg thuis dat het niet misgaat. Want meteen is alles helemaal onder het blauw. Schijnt, zo te zijn. Ik heb het ook nooit eerder gedaan. Dus ik maak het flesje open, Methylene Blue. Kijk, je kan het poeder zien. Zie je, er zit blauw poeder in. Dat gaat nu in het uh, flesje hier. Gewoon gekocht bij de HEMA. En dan gaan we 100 milliliter water in uh, oplossen. Dus ik ga hier... Zie je, ik begin heel voorzichtig. Ik zie het nu al een beetje spetteren. Even kijken hoor, 100 milliliter, we zijn er al bijna. Ja, een beetje nog. Het spet het enorm. Dus dit is uh, voldoende. Hier kan je echt een goede oplossing mee maken. Even voor, voor de zekerheid de dop erop. Goed roeren. Je ziet het is echt hartstikke mooi blauw. Je kan hier echt serieus een kledingstuk mee uh, kleuren. Maar zo meteen gaan we het dus natuurlijk innemen. Je ziet natuurlijk allerlei beelden online van mensen met een blauwe tong. En nu gaan we deze mix. Ik heb het goed gemixt. Deze mix gaan we nu overbrengen in een aantal flesjes die ik in het verleden bewaard heb. Je kan ook dit soort flesjes uh, thuis, uh, worden allerlei olie ingestopt, gewoon bewaren. En nu overhevelen, ik hoop dat het goed gaat. Anders krijg ik zo meteen blauwe handen. En ik ga dit nu heel voorzichtig, probeer ik tenminste heel voorzichtig. Zie je? Overhevelen in dit flesje. Het voordeel van dit flesje is dat er uh, een soort druppelaar bij zit. Dat is dit. Daar heb ik al ervaring mee. Dus daarmee kan je heel makkelijk druppels in je mond doen of in een flesje doen. Waar je dan weer... Oké, okay. ik doe hier ook een beetje in. Zo verdeel ik deze 100 milliliter over een aantal flesjes. Zo kan ik het makkelijk bewaren. Dan kan ik andere mensen ook een flesje geven. Nou, tot nu toe gaat het heel goed. Geen... Uh... Blauwe vingers. Dit is ook zo'n flesje gewoon van Holland en Baird, arganolie, met kokend water helemaal schoongemaakt. Nog even roeren, schudden, schudden voor gebruik en dan uh... kijk, ik ga heel voorzichtig stoppen dat er zo, zo in. En dan hou, hou ik als laatste nog. Kijk, je kan ook met dit pipetje mooi druppelgewijs 
iedere keer zorgen dat ik de juiste dosering neem. Als laatste, dit flesje heb ik ook met kokend water uitgekookt. Dat doet dan de laatste hoeveelheid in. Van de Matthew in Blue. En dan heb ik vier flesjes geprepareerd. Dan kan ik een hele tijd vooruit. Zo, nu zit alles erin. Laatste druppeltje. Ik stop deze er weer op. Hiermee kan je dus ook druppeltjes eruit laten komen. Dopje erop. Klaar. Vier maanden Matthew in Blue. Van... Uh... CZTL, beste merk op dit uh, vlak. Geen rommel gemaakt, maar in principe zou ik zeggen doe het thuis op een plek waarbij je wel een beetje rommel kan maken. Maar daarna veeg je het gewoon af met uh, een doekje. Dat was hier dus allemaal niet. Nee, er was geen sprake van. Dus dit is uh, goed gegaan. Project geslaagd. Ja.